Hey guys, welcome back to another video, and today I'll be doing a breakdown on Jean, the Dandelion Knight. Jean is one of the most versatile characters in Genshin Impact, and she can definitely hold a spot in your team, whether it be in your main team or the Spiral Abyss. Jean can fit in any of the following roles, as a main DPS, healer, or utility. What allows her to be used as utility is the fact that she is a Nemo, and her elemental skill, Gelblade. I first need to address that Jean is not the best main DPS or healer in solo play. The reason why she is extremely good is the fact that she can be all these roles at the same time. Jean's skill talents. Favonius blade work. Normal attack. Jean will form up to 5 consecutive attacks. Charge attacks. When using Jean's charge attacks, you will launch enemies into the air. This is great for buying time and stopping an enemy from attacking you. The only downside is, is that if you use this on small enemies, you won't be able to hit them until they come down. You can combo this with ranged users as they can hit airborne targets. Jean's elemental skill, Gale Blade. Jean will release a miniature storm that gathers and blasts enemies away. There's really not much use of holding the skill down except for making enemies fly in Spiral Abyss and Domains to do lots of full damage, or unless you have Constellation 1 of her. Her elemental skill ratio is insanely large with a short cooldown, meaning she can deal lots of damage and spam this skill. I will get into how you can build her as utility with the skill later in the video. The blast can create space in between you and the enemy to give you time to run away if necessary. Can be comboed with Dandelion Field to deal exit damage. The blast also interrupts enemies from attacking or using a move. If you are playing aggressive and use this skill, it can blast away enemies, meaning you will have to sprint towards them to close the distance, consuming stamina. This isn't enough of a downside that merits not to use this skill in that type of situation. It's just something you should keep in mind when juggling your stamina. Jean's Elemental Burst, Dandelion Breeze. Jean will create a dandelion field which restores a large amount of HP. This scales off Jean's attack. While in the field, you will regen HP and be afflicted with a Nemo and will deal a Nemo damage to enemies that enter or exit this field. Her elemental burst is extremely good in lots of situations. It will heal for a large amount of HP and deal a lot of damage. If you are in the Spiral Abyss or Domain that afflicts you with Pyro, Cryo, Electro or Hydro, using her burst will get rid of this without causing negative status effects. For example, if you have Cryo and use Barbara's elemental skill, you will become frozen. This burst makes her a good healer, but since it is tied to her burst, if you don't have enough energy, you won't heal. So, imagine this scenario, if all your party members are low, you will need to somehow generate energy particles or attack with her to heal. Unlike Barbara or Kiki who has it as a skill, you don't need to put yourself at risk to heal. Passive Talent, Wind Companion. Hits by Jean's normal attack have a 50% chance to regen HP equal to 15% of Jean's attack. This talent is a bit of a weird one and I'll explain why. This passive alone allows her to be a main DPS while needing a secondary healer. You don't need to use a skill to heal when you attack with Jean as main DPS. You will be healing as you attack. This pairs well with any attack speed boost as you will be attacking more. If you need to heal, remember to attack normally and not with charged attacks. This talent is amazing in co-op as you can heal everyone consistently with no healing downtime. Now this passive is a bit of a weird one if you want to make Jean your main healer. The reason for this is that if you want her to be your main healer, for her to heal with this passive, Jean will need to be on the field and attack. If this is the case, that means there will be less uptime on your main DPS being on the field, meaning you'll be dealing less damage overall. This is only a real problem if you're doing something like the Spiral Abyss, as there's a time limit in each chamber, apart from, you know, defending the monolith. Passive talent, let the wind lead. Using Dandelion Breeze will regenerate 20% of its energy. Makes the elemental burst come up a lot faster, making it cost 64 energy instead. There are no cons with this passive, pretty straightforward. Last but not least, her passive talent, Guiding Breeze. When she cooks with a dish that heals, you will have a 12% chance to get another one for free. Spiraling Tempest. Increases the pulling speed of Gale Blade after holding more than 1 second, and increases the damage dealt by 40%. Getting this constellation will increase her DPS. Not the most crazy of constellations, but this is good nonetheless. People is Aegis. When Jean picks up the elemental orb, all party members have their movement speed and attack speed increased by 15% for 15 seconds. Generating an elemental orb is really easy. You generate these via your elemental skill or hitting an enemy with the last chain of your attack combo. This is one of her best constellations to get as she can give all party members an attack and movement speed boost. When the West Wind arises, Increases the level of Dandelion Breeze by 3. Solo Constellation giving Jean increased healing and burst damage. Lands of Dandelion. Within the field created by Dandelion Breeze, all enemies will have their Nemo res decreased by 40%. This increases the damage output of all Nemo characters in your team. This can be comboed using your burst first 
and then your elemental skill Gale Blade to deal extra damage. A nice constellation to have, but not insane unless you're running a very specific team comp, aka the character that has just to be released, Zhao, who I really want. Anyways, Outbursting Gust. Increase the level of Gale Blade by 3. Solid constellation again, this will make Jean hit harder. Lion's Fang, fair protector of Monstat. Incoming damage is decreased by 35% within the field created by Dandelion Breeze. Upon leaving the Dandelion field, this effect lasts for 3 attacks or 10 seconds. Guessing this constellation will improve Jean's utility. It makes everyone tankier and you for sure won't die if you stay in this Dandelion field. An extremely good constellation, but not game breaking, unlike constellation 2. The best constellation to pull on Jean has to be constellation 2. With it giving attack speed boost by 50% and movement speed by 15% for 15 seconds, that's just insane. When doing a build, it is best to have a spread. This means not to invest heavily into one stat, such as having everything in attack percentage. There are four areas you want to focus on if you want to maximize damage. Attack percentage, type bonus percentage, like pyro or physical, crit rate and crit damage, and also decreasing the enemy's physical or elemental resistance. Levels also play a part in damage calculation, but the difference is very minute, it doesn't really matter too much. I will be going over two builds. There's not really any point in investing into a full healer build because Jean isn't designed to be a pure healer. She is a lot better in a utility and healer role over a pure healer one. For main DPS and healer build, this is the weapons you want to run. In first place, we have the Aquila Fervonia. With high base attack with physical damage bonus and an attack boost, easily the best weapon for Jean to go for or any other users with swords. In second is a prototype ranker. The black sword does come very close to it, but loses out due to the fact that the black sword has less base attack than the prototype ranker. There are two artifacts that you can go for on Jean. You have the Gladiators Finale 4 piece, which is what I recommend. Or if you can't get that somehow, or can't get the artifacts to match up properly, uh, you can go for the Bloodstained 2 piece with 2 piece of the Gladiator piece set. The artifact main stats you want to go for, for the time piece, you want attack percentage. On the goblet, you want physical percentage. On the circlet, you would ideally want crit rate, but if your crit rate is over 50%, opt for crit damage. The artifact sub stats you want to go for is crit rate, crit damage, or attack percentage. Others which is acceptable is flat attack, elemental mastery, or energy recharge. If your user has a healer, the only time you will ideally heal with her is with her burst. Her burst is pretty much guaranteed to heal your party to full, so we don't need to go into a full healing artifact set. Take note that when you use Gale Blade, make sure she is the current member of the field so she can get energy particles and use her burst more consistently. Now, before I go over her healers and utility build, I just want to say there's so many different ways you can build her, and that's why I love her so much. There isn't one correct definitive build, it all depends on your comp and what you want to go for. Onto the healer and utility build. The best weapon to go on Jean is a Skyward Blade. With it having high base attack, giving it a bit of crit and a lot of energy recharge, easily the best weapon for her. In second, we have the Sacrificial Sword. This is a lot better than the Favonia Sword due to the fact it has a chance to reset Gale Blade. In third is any 4 star weapon with either attack or energy recharge. So Favonia Sword, the Flute or Lion Roar. Any is firing and I'll say why once I get into the artifact stats you want to go for. If you didn't get so lucky with 4 stars, go for any 3 star weapon with either attack or energy recharge. There are two sets you can go on her, Noblesse Oblige 4-piece or Veridescent Venera 4-piece. To decide on what to go for, if your main DPS mostly does physical damage, go Noblesse Oblige. If your main DPS does elemental damage, go Veridescent Venera. Reducing the enemy resistance by 40% is a huge damage boost for your main DPS. Artifact main stats you want to go for. For the timepiece, you want attack percentage or energy recharge. Go opposite of what your weapon is, so if your weapon is attack percentage, Go for energy recharge timepiece and vice versa. I have tried going both energy recharge on the weapon and the timepiece and my burst was fully charged but I had about 6 seconds left on my cooldown every single time. Having 230% energy recharge was excessive on my gene, having 160 felt good. For the goblet you want attack percentage. If you want your gene to do more damage on utility, go for a new more damage bonus instead. You will heal less but this is a trade you have to be willing to make. I would recommend getting the attack percentage as it is easier to roll and you will heal more, but if you're crazy, go anywhere damage. For the circular, you want attack percentage or healing bonus. For me personally, having her having an attack percentage circular is enough for her to heal my entire team to full, and going this also increases her damage for my team. If you don't feel like she heals enough for your team, go healing bonus instead. There are lots of ways you can build your utility healer gene. Do what is best for you, as anything will work on her as her burst heals for a crap ton anyways. 
You don't really need to focus on getting the perfect rolls on substats with any support character, main stat is enough. Only go for substats on your support characters once you have the perfect substats on your main DPS. Substats you want to go for. The best is energy recharge and attack percentage. Acceptable is flat attack, elemental mastery and crit rate. Jean is a very fun and versatile character to have. A jack of all trades and an all in one character, it really doesn't get better than this. Even if she doesn't hold a spot on your main team, she is great to invest in for Spiral Abyss. The fact that she can be a healer and a DPS means you only need to invest into one character instead of two. When I got her early in the game, she wasn't outperforming Barbara as a healer, so I honestly thought I got the short end of the stick and got a bad 5 star. But once I reached floor 5 in Spiral Abyss, which requires two teams, I couldn't have Barbara on both teams, and I needed two healers. I originally built Jean as a main healer with Razor as main DPS, but she wasn't healing Razor enough and I would fail on my sub team due to everyone dying or running out of time. Then I thought, hey, maybe I should transfer all my good artifacts from Razor to Jean and make her my main DPS. Doing this allowed her to have more attack and effectively more healing. After seeing the performance that was the beast of Jean, I realised I was building her wrong and was not using her for her straps. She has then since replaced Barbara and is now on my main team. Jean can fit into any team comp. The fact that she is a Nemo, can deal damage and heal, she will have no problem fitting into any team. You can opt for the Nemo Resonance to get 5% core reduction on skills as well as increased movement speed. If you need to heal with her burst after using anyone's skills, make sure she is a current character on the field as whoever is present on the field when collecting the elemental particles, they will get more energy than if they were off the field. So, after using Gale Blade, don't switch her out immediately and wait for her to collect the orbs before switching out. All in all, she's extremely fun to play and I don't regret for a second ever pulling her. Thank you for watching my guide and for Sunjin.